Good morning, folks. Good morning, Good morning, Springfield. Good morning, Fairfax County. Good morning. Hey. Hey. All right. I know you've been working the phones all morning, but I got to ask you: Are you all fired up? Yeah. Woo! Are you ready for this president to go? Yeah. Woo! All right. All right. That's what I like to hear. Hey, before we really get going, I want to give a quick shout out to our great congressional candidate in the eighth. Patrick Murray, who's running one heck of a campaign. <laughs> we need Patrick to win and, and boot uh, that Moran character right out of Congress. We need Patrick. So we're thrilled to have him. Um, before we really get going, folks, I mean, let's take a step back and, and understand what's happening in the country right now. You know, every single election cycle, politicians stand up in front of you and they say, hey, look, this is the most important election of our time. And you know what? Usually to them, it is, because their name's on the ballot. I understand what they're going through. But this time around, I think we all know something different is happening out there. Something different's happening out there. We have our economic freedom at stake. We have our religious freedom at stake. Yes. We have the direction of our country at stake. And while that's going on, what is our president doing? Well, this weekend, he's in our neck of the woods, and he's going to be doing his 118th, 119th, and 120th fundraiser when our economy is absolutely in the tank. I don't know if you saw the job numbers or the growth of the economy that came out uh, just recently. It's abysmal. And what's this guy doing? All he's doing is running around trying to get more money to flood our Virginia airwaves with more negative ads out there talking about uh, class warfare, talking about anti-business policies, uh, and really, instead of being the uniter that he promised, dividing our country. And while that's going on, we have Karen Chu. Where is Karen? Karen's right behind me. Karen is an Iraq War veteran, served our country well. She's unemployed right now. So you think about it. If our president decided not to do the 118th, 119th, and 120th fundraiser and actually focused on the economy, I think Karen might be able to find a job. Now, we Republicans, we believe in the free market. I think we're going to help her and help our country turn this, turn this economy around and help her get a job. Um, folks, the good thing is that in times of great peril, Throughout history, in times of great peril, our country tends to turn to Virginia for the answers. 236 years ago, when our countrymen asked someone to write the original Dear John breakup letter, they turned to a Virginian. <laughs> when they looked for someone to lead the Continental Congress to fight for our independence, they turned to a Virginian. When they looked for the first president of our great United States of America, they turned to a Virginian. Well, folks, 236 years later, our economic freedom is at stake. Our religious freedom is still at stake. And our nation is turning to Virginia once again. We are the number one battleground state in the country. Everything you are doing, every effort that you are making, is making a huge difference. At the Romney Victory Campaign, we have 29 offices around the Commonwealth. We have just made, thanks to your help, the millionth voter contact out there. We are a red storm rising, and we are going <laughs> And just to show how important this office here in Springfield and how important our efforts in Northern Virginia really are, I want to turn it over to a man who has served this community so well over the years, a strong conservative, a strong Republican, a man who has proven time and time again that you can win in Springfield, you can win in Fairfax County, you can win in Northern Virginia. Our supervisor, Pat Herity. Thank you very much for the time and introduction, and also thank you for the great job you're doing at Victory. You know, as you heard Pete say, Virginia is the number one battle great, uh, battleground state in this great nation. And in Fairfax County, we've got one in seven votes in Virginia right here in Fairfax County. And you can't win Fairfax County without a turnout, a strong turnout in Springfield. 
And that's why I'm so glad we've opened this office and your investment in the Springfield area so that we can turn Springfield out so we can take Fairfax County and we can win Virginia. It's absolutely critical. We can't afford Virginia or Fairfax County, can't afford four more years of President Obama's failed leadership, divisiveness, and mismanagement of the budget, which is about to cost Virginia 200,000 jobs. We also can't afford his number one cheerleader, Timmy Kane. <laughs> who, uh, who gave, who, who supported the sequestration that could lose us those 200,000 jobs, who gave away the Dulles toll road to an unelected body so they can raise tolls through the roof, and I could go on and on and on. But it's really going to be all you in this room, day after day, night after night, that's going to get it done. And, and uh, again, thank you for your investment. And now it's my great pleasure to introduce our honored guest, Senator John Thune, the Republican Senator from uh, the great state of uh, South Dakota. Um, John is the, uh, or Senator Thune is the chairman of the Re Republican Senatorial Conference. Uh, he's a man who knows something about tight races. He ran in 2004 and, and beat uh, Majority Leader Tom Daschle by a very, very narrow margin. So he knows what it's like. Virginia's going to be close, and we're so glad that he came, uh, took time out of his very busy schedule to come to Virginia, to come to Springfield, to let us know how important it is to win. So without any further ado, Senator John Thune. Thank you, Pat. Thank you, Pete. And Patrick Murray, thanks for, uh, for running, and uh, you're going to win. And you're going to win because of the work of a lot of these folks here. So. Thanks for the chance to be with you. Um, it's been pointed out uh, already, but uh, the reason that I'm here today is because Virginia is ground zero in this presidential campaign and up all these other campaigns up and down the ballot this year. Uh, it's going to be critical that we get the vote out. And everything that you do here, every phone call that you make, which I know is tedious, hard work, monotonous work sometimes, is going to get us one step closer to making sure that Mitt Romney is the next president of the United States. And, and it, can't, it can't happen soon enough. Uh, you've all heard it discussed, but uh, Pete was talking about this. You know, when you've got 1.5% uh, economic growth, which is what they just told us this morning was the last quarter growth, very, very sluggish economic growth, uh, over 40 months now of unemployment above 8%, 23 million Americans either unemployed or underemployed, uh, you've got, since this president took office, fuel prices have nearly doubled. Health, care, health insurance costs have gone up by 23%. Uh, College tuition costs have gone up by 25%. The number of people on food stamps has gone up by 44%. And the federal debt has gone up by 49% in the three and a half years that this president has been in office. We cannot change the direction of this country soon enough. And unfortunately, what this president is doing, as, uh, as was mentioned by Pete, um, you know, he hasn't met with his jobs council in 191 days. You would think with the state of the economy and the state of unemployment in this country that the president would be focused like a laser on getting the economy growing and putting people in this country back to work. But he is now, during that 191 days that he hasn't met with his jobs council about the economy, has held 119 fundraisers and found time to play 10 rounds of golf. So he's, he's definitely got his priorities straight, but his priorities are a lot more about the election this fall than they are about the economy and the jobs of hardworking Americans. So we need, to, we need to change direction for this country. And the only way we're going to do that is to elect somebody at the presidential level who knows how to lead this country, who knows how to fix the economy, knows how to put Americans back to work. Uh, I endorsed uh, Mitt Romney very early, back last fall, uh, before the Iowa caucuses and campaigned with him across Iowa, because I believe profoundly that he has the skill set, the experience, and the know-how to turn this country around, get it back on the right track, get the economy growing and expanding, putting Americans back to work. And the reason I know that is because he's got a record of doing it. He took distressed companies uh, when he was a private businessman, turned them around, uh, created jobs in doing that. He took a a state in Massachusetts when he was governor that was swimming in red ink and turned it around and, and left it with a surplus and reduced taxes in doing that and, and got the unemployment rate down, got more people back to work. He took the Olympics and, and turned that around. He's got a record of taking tough, tough situations and turning them around. And we are in a tough situation and it's going to take presidential leadership. You can't do big things in Washington, D.C. unless you've got presidential leadership. 
And I'm one of uh, 535 members of Congress. And even though you know there are some people in Congress who have some good ideas about how to fix things, you have to have a leader in the White House that is willing to roll up his sleeves and go to work and lead the American people and lead the United States Congress on a pathway to get this country back on the right track. So I am very excited about this election. It is a critical election year. The consequences could not be greater. The stakes could not be higher. And that's why we need every single person doing everything they possibly can between now and November to make sure we turn out all of our votes on election day. And as Pete uh, mentioned, or Pat mentioned, I guess it was, I've had a couple of close elections. I lost the first one. 524 votes. That's kind of burned into my memory. Uh, I ran a very hard-hitting close Senate race, and I lost it by a narrow margin. And I can't tell you how many people that came up to me after that election loss and said, you know, if I'd known it was going to be that close, I would have gotten such and such to vote. I even had people come up to me and tell me if I'd known it was going to be that close, I would have voted. And I'm not sure why they wanted to admit that. But the point is, ladies and gentlemen, every single vote counts. And the, the ground game, there is no substitute for getting people out on election day and getting our voters out. And that's what you are about. It's identifying those voters out there, figuring out who they are, making sure they vote on election day, hopefully persuading those undecided voters, people who haven't made up their minds yet, and to get them to, to vote the right way in November. But these types of activities, it's just the blocking and the tackling and executing the small things in campaigns that really make a difference. And so everybody can do their part. Not everybody's name is going to be on the ballot. But everybody can do their part to set a different course and a different direction for the future of this country. One that's built around the fundamental concept and principle of freedom, as opposed to the fundamental principle and concept that this administration is built on, and that's government. This really is a choice. This is a choice in this election between we, whether we believe in the power of freedom or whether we believe in the power of government. And this president and his administration and his allies in Congress have doubled down on expanding and growing government at the expense of the private economy. And every single day that the government gets bigger and we have more bureaucrats and more regulations and more taxes in Washington, D.C., the American people have fewer and fewer freedoms. It's about freedom. That's what this election is really, that's what's at stake. It hangs in the balance. And uh, we, can, we can do uh, our part to tip that balance in favor of freedom. So whether it's uh, pounding in yard signs or making phone calls or walking neighborhoods or um, contributing to the campaign, Whatever you can do, I just want to ask you to work as hard as you can between now and November because this is about the future of this country. There's never been a time in our nation's history. And Pete's exactly right. Every politician gets up every election year and says this is the most important election ever. And it's all because we think it is because, you know, we might be running for something. But if you look out across this country, this is the most important election in a very, very long time. And I, I honestly believe that if we don't get it right this time, we are on a slippery slope and are heading in a direction that will make us more like a Western European social democracy and less like the exceptional, distinctive nation that our founders and those people in Virginia had in mind uh, when they created this great republic so many years ago. So I'm thankful to be here. I'm thankful for what you're doing. Uh, Karen, thank you for your service to our great country and all the veterans who are here today. We're very because of the service and sacrifice of so many Americans who every single day put on their put on the uniform and defend our interests uh, here at home and around the world. And uh, that's also at stake because we have a president, I don't think, who understands uh, really how to lead this country, not only when it comes to fixing the economy, but to uh, maintaining America's place in the world. But we're going to change that in November when we elect Mitt Romney as the next president of the United States. And when we elect George Allen to the United States Senate and Patrick Murphy to the House of Representatives. Because if we're going to give Mitt Romney uh, an opportunity to be president, we need to make sure he has a team that he can work with in Congress. And that's why uh, getting George Allen to the United States Senate and giving us a majority in the United States Senate and electing a fine quality candidate who shares your values and principles like Patrick Murray to the House of Representatives will give us a team that can turn this country around fix the economy, get people back to work, and make America great again. Thank you very much. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Folks, you know, when it comes to uh, Mitt Romney's choice for number two, we have a favorite son in Virginia who is a really solid conservative, proven track record, great head of hair. 
Now, if for some reason Mitt Romney doesn't select our favorite son, I don't know, there might be someone else who fits that bill as well. <laughs> Thanks for all your work. Let's get back at it. Thank you.